Okay, so. Oh god, I have like. Oh. Don't be nervous, take your time. Okay, yeah, so right. I have 10 of them. Okay. And this was before I did any research, so I know half these questions, so. <laughs> I said, okay. What is the difference between a V6, V8, V10, and V12 engines? Uh, the amount of cylinders. You know, that's yeah. why they call them 6, 8, 10. You're building that now, so the more pistons, the more numbers. Mm -hmm. Always in pairs. How are different numbers. supercar engines made for like different supercars? Like uh, say, for example, a Maserati versus a McLaren. What's the question? Like, um, how are, how are the different supercar engines made? Well, well, I think all super, I think all engines are made differently. They're all made a certain way. But I think when you get into supercars, then you get into almost hand building engines versus machine building engines. So you're you're pushing such power, torque, and horsepower that it, and it's so unique that instead of making thirty of them on an assembly line, you've got to make one and make sure that it's perfect. Clearances, tolerances, everything's got to be one hundred percent perfect in order for do what it's supposed to. Be. Okay, so why does the V12 engine produce the most power in like cars? Actually, the, the, the engine with the I, most power is the, the Bugatti. Yeah. It's got 16 cylinders. I think it makes 1,500 horsepower. Yeah. That's, the, that's actually the, the strongest motor so, in a production car. Naturally, looking at an engine without any kind of turbochargers, yeah. superchargers, all sorts of stuff, it's just the amount of cylinders. So the old school saying, and dad may know this, is like there's no replacement for displacement, right? right. So add the cylinders, the bigger the, the piston, the more of them there are, mm -hmm. the more horsepower, the more power, the faster the engine. Okay, <laughs> and I don't know why I wrote this down, but I still did. Do supercar engines have like specific horsepowers for each engine, or does that depend on like the pistons or like something in the engine? I think it's just model specific. Um, you know, the car is created with X amount of horsepower, and that all is weighed. That's all weighted with like weight of the engine. Yeah. You know, weight of the car versus yeah. weight of the engine. You know, you, cars can go really fast, but they still have to turn and stop. So, yeah, I'm sure they can put 3,000 horsepower in a Bugatti, but maybe it won't turn or stop after that. So, right. all that has to be taken into consideration. Okay, um, what component of the engine produces the most energy or power? Uh, well, I mean, as far as energy goes, it's got to be the combustion. Yeah, it's got to be. But that's all transferred through the piston down the, the connecting rod to the the crankshaft. So I guess the crankshaft would be probably or the, the anywhere. Yeah, there. anywhere in that line. Anywhere the in that biggest line, loss you know? of energy, I think, is heat. So that's like radiator end. Mm -hmm. That's where you lose most of your your power. So you're creating a lot of power, but from what the engine creates to what transfers to the road, I think what is like 60% loss? 60%, yeah, at least. Is lost in just in moving heat. components in heat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, where am I? Uh, oh, how does the type of engine, for, uh, I can't speak. How does the type of engines affect the car's performance? Like, do different kind of engines help, like their car's performance? Say for like, example, for the Bugatti, like, does that engine help it, like, um, like go faster on, like, performance-wise? Yeah, so the, the engine helps in the sense that it's the overall weight. So wherever it's placed, whether it's in the middle, the front, or the back, and that's all just to counteract the balance of how the car is made. Yeah, and that's going on to my um, next question. Why are some engines and supercars in the rear, and does this help the performance? It's balance. You know, they want to put a car on, on four scales and have everything be even. So, like, when you go into a turn, it's not like the back is heavier yeah. or the front is heavier. You know, they want the car to be even and flat so you can, you know, utilize it. Uh -huh. So, um, does the type of engines, do they, um, like, affect the RPM counter? Does the, um, like, the higher you go for an engine, like, um... It's all about the manufacturer, yeah. uh, however yeah. they want their engines, if they want the engines to rev really high or if they want them to, to yeah. you know, rev low and make power lower. Sure. So it's all about uh, brand specific and vehicle specific.
know, how they want the car to feel, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I almost feel like smaller engines would rev higher versus yeah. bigger engines. Usually, like, four-cylinder engines can rev a lot higher because there's, there's less parts moving. Yeah. You know, when you got 10, 12 cylinders, it's a lot of weight getting thrown right. around. You can't get it spinning that fast, you know? It's almost like the bigger the engine, the less it revs. Yeah. This is a fair yeah. assumption. Like, right? in the older cars, like, in the 50s and 60s, when they had, like, you know, Massive 500 weight. cubic inch engines, yeah. they only revved to 4,000 or 5,000 RPM. But now they make these little. You get a motorcycle cylinders. to rev, you know, 1,300, 1,400. Yeah, you know, you know 13,000, 14,000. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, last one is, is the V-shaped engine like in any way? Is that important or is that just like balance or stuff like that or the way it fits in the car? I mean, it's I, it's very well. So the Bugatti's a W engine, right? A w, but it's still a V. It's still a V because you're looking at it that yeah. way. Mm-hmm. But it's just a, and then you have like the Porsche Boxer or the you know the Subarus I guess have it too. Yep. That's the button. So they go this way versus this way. And then there's but, inline where everything right, is in, inline. inline. But it's it's on the design basis. It's like anything else. It's like it it has to serve a certain purpose. And how do they accomplish it? With an inline four or a straight six or mm-hmm. a V six or V eight or you know. W. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's all my questions. Awesome. All right.